Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Mixcraft tutorial. This is number 5 in my series. I am Andre from Chrome FX Films, and in this video I will be continuing on making music with virtual orchestras. Now, creating a virtual orchestra is a lot more work than creating an electronic one. That is because balancing the sound so everything blends together is very difficult to achieve, and that is something that even I am still trying to master. Everything I teach you guys is from my own experiences. Learning Mixcraft was completely self-taught. I expect you guys to develop your own techniques and tricks to make your own music. So I want you to build off of what you learn in this video and take it to the next level. So I have a few instruments here already placed. The, I have five. Uh, the, it is the bass, the strings, the electric guitar, the grand piano, and the brass selection. Now what each instrument will be doing, they will all be functioning as a different part of the song. And instead of creating um, an original piece, what I'm going to be doing this time is recreating or reinventing the song Mirrors by Justin Timberlake. I will not be recording the whole song, but just the first minute or so, uh, and I'll be adding different instruments in there. So we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to hook up my MIDI keyboard here. And now, all right, there you go. Mixcraft has detected it. So I'm going to record my piano piece first and make sure that my track, it, the tempo is correct. It's 120 beats per minute and I like that. I have to make sure my rec uh, metronome is on. So there you go. If you do uh, Alt and O, uh, when it's highlighted here, that means it is on. So you will hear it when I press record. So I'm going to press record, but I'm going to start on the fourth beat, which is the second measure. That's just so when I press record, I don't have to rush to go to the keyboard. Um, that it, it, when you're making music professionally, it is very helpful when you have your own control panel. So all the features that are on a computer keyboard, you can find on that control panel. But in this case, I just have a MIDI keyboard and a computer keyboard, so uh, I don't have that. But that's why I like starting on the second measure, so I can have those first four beats to count the beats in my head and be able to time it correctly when I'm recording. So I'm going to play it now. So I hit a few wrong notes there. Let me fix this really quick. There you go. Okay. And I make sure that it ends on the, not the 10th beat. See, it's slightly off right there. You always wanna make sure that's right on but I'm going to make sure that this is aligned perfectly on the second measure. So when I control A, select everything, I can drag it back and it will actually be on beat. You always want to do that. So when you are shifting things around, everything actually matches on beat because as you see, as I said before, I started on measure two. So if you're starting on measure one, you want to make sure that the music is all on beat. And there is a three millisecond delay on my computer, but everybody else will have different delays. Uh, three milliseconds is about as low as Mixcraft gets. Uh, I have not had it any lower than that. Uh, but require, but to get to three millisecond delay, you have to disable all other audio devices on your computer. And Mixcraft has a feature for that. So you don't have to worry about doing it yourself. It handles all that automatically, which is very nice and very helpful. It saves a lot of time. So I have this first section here. And down here at the end, I want to drag the loop N to the ninth measure so I can loop it by pressing the loop button down here. Now I'm going to record the bass sound. And I'm just going to do this for the rest of the instruments. So I will make sure that this is on the second measure for now. And we will shift it later. Uh, after all the instruments have been recorded. I'm going to change the snap to uh, 1 16th notes just so it's easier to work with. Here we go. Uh, that's a little octave too high.
All right. Fix this up a bit. Make sure that's on B, and it is. Make it end on the ninth measure here. And I'm going to make it fade out a little bit because since I was holding down the note, the note kept playing, but realistically it would start fading out if you actually strum it like an actual bass. All right. And shift that to second measure, and let's listen again. All right, I like it. I'm going to add a little bit of a reverb to the piano so it doesn't sound so sharp. I like it. So I'm going to record the main electric guitar part. And this is an interesting sounding guitar. I selected this one just because it's the most non-artificial sound I can find in Mixcraft uh, that comes with Mixcraft when you purchase it or the free version. Uh, and it sounds a lot better than the actual distorted guitar. So I'm going to use this one now. I did hit that sour note there. I had a little pedal issue. So I'm going to go into the foot pedal here. Or there is an option here. Yeah, I'm going to make sure that it's all on. Let's try this. There you go, sounds much better. All right, same thing here. Make sure that's right on the beat. Shift it back. And don't wanna sign everything. There you go, slide it over. Make sure it's nine. Here we go. All right. Now we move on to the part where the lyrics come in. Since there aren't actually lyrics, I'm gonna fill in those lyrics with instruments and in this case it will be the uh, French horn ensemble so let me just start by recording that and then I'll move on here we go oh uh, that is not supposed to be there let me actually record the piano first because I realized I have to record the second part so I'm adding a new lane in here and I'll start here Okay, that's nice. So let me again do the exact same thing here, make sure everything's on beat. Shift it all back. Go down to the end here and make the loop end at 17, 17th measure. All right, now I'm gonna add the French horn part. But now I'm going to add the strings, which is going to function as the drums. I'm not going to actually be adding any drum sounds in here. So the way that the drums work, I'm going to try that with the strings. So here we go. too bad. Let me fix these again. Make sure everything's on beat. Go to the end here. 
Measure 17. All right, there you go. And if we play it now, let's see what it sounds like. Just going to have a quick reverb effect. There you go. So it sounds nice. The only thing about the piano is that it sounds like he's the, whoever is playing it, which in this case is me. Just the piano. The piano sounds like the keys are being struck too hard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the velocity of these so they all sound a lot softer. Now, this is a powerful tool when you're changing the velocity of notes. That is when the piano starts sounding very nice. When you're actually playing piano, uh, playing the notes is different than actually playing the emotion. When you're playing a lot bigger songs, it's great to have that emotion and that feeling behind it when you're playing the song. So in this case, I'm going to make it so the piano is very soft. Uh, but one way I can do this is by dragging my mouse like this and then just hoping that I make a straight line. But since that's obviously not a straight line, another way, which is a, this is a trick I came up with, it, you can actually zoom out here. And you see that all the lines are much closer together. So if you just drag right here, if you can make a straight line for an inch, then everything is much closer together. And then that way you can get much softer sounds. So I'm going to try this. There you go. And they're all about the same level. So if we listen to this again. There you go. And it sounds much nicer. And another thing that I did here is that the panning has been changed. In actual orchestras, you have uh, arrangements. And when you're recording in a live room, everything has to be positioned. Since it's not virtual, that's kind of like, uh, that's kind of a no-brainer. So you have to have everything positioned in certain areas. Uh, in live orchestras, you would have the strings on one side and then the brass on the other. And in this ca in this case, I have the brass on the left side and the strings on the right so when I put it all together all, all the instruments are positioned differently the piano is usually in the center and the electric guitar I made it slightly to the right it's about like, like it says here about 10% right 10 13 and then the bass is center too and I go into the mixer panel and this is where I can change the actual frequencies I turned up the French horn frequencies so it stands out from the rest. When everything is the exact same frequency or very close, uh, the, the sounds tend to sound more muffled or mushed and that is not exactly the correct sound that you always want to get. So I turned up the high frequencies on the uh, main mixer and then on the strings so they stand out more than others and also on the uh, French horn, I will have to turn up the high frequency slightly just so it sounds more realistic also. And there are many uh, strings packs and, and orchestral packs that you can purchase online. Uh, most of the ones that I've seen cost ranges from 300 to $1,000. And the best stuff is, that I've seen is, is definitely on the, the more pricey side but the quality that you get is amazing. But when you're dealing with that much money, uh, usually you would want to make sure that you're making the right choice. And for creating music professionally, if you're trying to uh, do it as a living, if you're a free freelance composer, uh, you probably would not be using Mixcraft for orchestras. There's a lot of other software out there that handles uh, the different sounds uh, much better and they have more realistic sounds so um, I will list some of those packs below uh, in the description but no, they are not they are not packs that I would recommend purchasing for Mixcraft because uh, later on this is this is a great software but if you're going into the field professionally I would recommend using something that has more powerful tools and more options so I just tweaked the mixer settings just a little bit. I'm going to hear this one more time and let's see what it sounds like. So it sounds nice. I'm going to record a quick thing with the electric guitar here and then that will be it.
All right, so a little bit fancy there. I hit a couple sour notes there. Let me fix that. That was a little bit quiet. So there you go. And I'm not going to play it again since you guys have heard it already enough times. But that is just a little bit more for you guys on using Mixcraft to create your own or orchestrated tracks and anything along that line, even piano. Uh, I am planning on doing a in-depth tutorial on creating piano music specifically, so solo pieces. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, you can subscribe to my channel give it a, a good rating on this video and when you subscribe you can get a, uh, updates for my new tutorials and any new content that I'm releasing uh, I do have a music page on soundcloud.com where you can see my work that I've been doing I don't post all my work but I do post some of it uh, very very select pieces and you can hear what I have there and everything's up free for download uh, so if you guys want to use it in your projects you feel free to do it just of course you know mention me and that is it guys and I will see you next time